Hey Hugs, Jamie here. Just a reminder, this podcast has merch. That's right. All you have to do is head to our website, uglytruth.com, find the new merch tab, click on it, and you'll be whisked away to our store where you will find the exclusive Lip and Clip bag, as well as the Hugly t-shirt, hoodies, and all the other accoutrement that you could possibly imagine because I need options and you should too. So treat yourself this holiday season, buy all the gifts for the loved ones, and then go to our website and buy your own. Thank you so much for supporting the Eds. Welcome to the Ugly Truth. We're back after a week off. Ugh. Ugh. Hello? I, yeah, I said it. Oh, why do I never? You know what? I believe you break the sound barrier every time you do your Ugh because I never hear it. Yours cuts out too. So I just, I just wait until it's done. Like... I, I assume you're finished. I think we're like the Mariah Carey of... of <laughs> you know, someone described my sneeze like that one. Because when I sneeze at the end, I'm like, you know? And then they're just like, what is that? Like a Mariah Carey Okay, sneeze? legit, you did that? <laughs> couldn't hear it. So I think that's what it is. Our octave is so high that the mic cuts out. <laughs> that's funny. That is funny. Anyway, welcome to The Ugly Truth. This is episode 504. And we are back after a week off from our Thanksgiving break. Hope everybody enjoyed some kind of Thanksgiving holiday with their bubbles, with their little social circles. Well, you know what's sad is not everyone stays in their bubble. You know, they they venture out. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I'm so sick of all this (laughs) bullshit. You know, it's just so annoying to me because, you know, on one hand, you've got everyone who's just like, I'm not saying they follow the rules, but they're just like, okay, you know, we'll do our due diligence to try mm-hmm. and squash this thing. Sure. And then you've got the other people like, you will not infringe on my constitutional rights. And I'm like, Ugh. fuck you. I'm like, what do you think they're trying to do? You know, it's just like, what would be the benefit of trying to make you stay at home? You know, really? Like, what? They're trying to take my gun. I'm like, nobody no, wash your fucking guns. Just nobody gives stay a home fuck. and wear a mask. God. That's what's funny is that type of citizen is so sure that... The governor of their state is bound and determined to ruin everyone's lives for what for no reason at all. And that's but, what I was, I'm like, for what purpose? They're like, it's the start of socialism. I'm like, it is not. Start, I'm like, OK, I'm like, but think about that. I said socialism is funded by people's taxes. I said, if everyone is staying home and There's no, no one's working, I'm like, mm-hmm. how can they start socialism? And that's my problem is that I'm like, there's no logic behind this thinking <laughs> and yeah. that's an operative word logic and oh, it just yeah. it, it just drives me insane but you know what there's no reasoning with people like that there is absolutely no reasoning with people like that we are literally living in a social media comment thread that's our lives these are our lives now we've got the people like us who are just like oh god unlike or sad face or angry face emoji and then the and just moving on with our day. Sometimes I read things and people are like, applaud for governor, run uh-huh. for president. And I'm just like, okay, please read between the lines and translate what they basically just said. Mm-hmm. Remove the American flags, you know, the fanfare, take out the word constitution, because if you just throw it in there, it doesn't, you know, everyone's like, America, you know, and I'm just like, no. Well, it's just like yelling. It's just like yelling 9-11. Yes, exactly. You know, just because you put that on there, you know, it It doesn't mean anything. Remove it. Just remove it. And and take out the buzzwords. And now just read exact all hashtags, everything. And now just Mm -hmm. read what they said and eliminate their name even. And just say, this is what this person said. This is what their job title is. Right. What do you think about what they said? And you're just like, well, that's garbage. I mean, uh, I'm yeah. appalled. Uh, what? Okay. Now read this. Oh, well, they should run for president. Okay. That's the same exact thing. You know? That's <laughs> so true. Anyway. All right. So everybody, hopefully a lot of our listeners, you know, did their I'm best. Sorry, yes. Hopefully you had a very good thing. So we were chatting on Thanksgiving, which mm-hmm. is funny. Because we were all talking about our turkeys. I was saying how I had insomnia all night because oh, I yeah, thinking I was afraid I was going to miss my alarm because I had set it for like 730. Because, you know, we are basically have Stockholm syndrome about our turkeys. <laughs> yes. Thinking that, you know, if we're not up by like 6 a.m. preparing our turkey to get it in the oven, 
you know, we won't be eating until 10 o'clock at night, which I know. just so happened we did eat at like almost nine o'clock at night, but that's a different <laughs> story. I was up in Adam and I was looking, I'm like, okay, I had a 15 pound turkey, which is small, but mm-hmm. there was only four of us. And so I don't know why, but I hadn't like previously looked to see how long it was going to take. I just assumed it was going to take like eight hours. <laughs> So, so I finally looked it up. Two hours a pound, Paula. <laughs> well, that's what I thought. And no. so I'm like, all right. I'm like 15. So they have those little calculators. You know, you get a butterball or something like that. And so it's like you enter your dimensions. I'm like, oh, I've got a 15 and a half pound turkey. It's not stuffed. It is thawed, you know. And it's like, it's like, okay, you will cook your turkey for three to three and a half hours. I'm like, what? And I'm yeah. like, I can't put that in until like noon at least. Because yeah. I'm like, yeah. we don't. We're, we're not the people that eat at two o'clock. I, I, I've i never understood that. Here's the deal. Well, first of all, we're in the minority. Most people eat at two o'clock. So they do get up at 5 a.m. to get the bird in so that they have it ready and sitting out by noon. But the reality is, is that uh, we, and I don't mean just you and I, I mean all of us were under the impression that if you weren't up in Adam at four or 5 a.m. on Thanksgiving day, no one was eating that day. I know. But that's that's a scam. It's a scam. Unless you ha- are insistent upon eating at two o'clock in the afternoon, which is bizarre. I don't understand this tradition. Then, you know, the only thing I heard is someone said to me, we eat at two o'clock so we can eat again at five o'clock. I'm like, that's ridiculous. Why would you do that to yourself? <laughs> Just fucking eat dinner like a normal person. Well, I know like... There's people who go to like big family gatherings and right. so they all like congregate at two and then they usually eat by like three or four, but it's like all potluck style. Everything's freezing. What and... about chips and dip, people? What about appetizers and stuff? Like what well, eat that? But I mean Deviled like... eggs. Olivia can have her own tray. No. <laughs> that was not even on the menu this year. What? You wouldn't even give her you wouldn't even indulge her one deviled egg? Okay, I would see that's the other thing too is like everybody wants to help, but I don't know how it is in your house, but in my house like Thanksgiving cooking it's it to me it's really just a one person job because I can't have anybody really preparing anything because nobody knows how to make anything. Oh, well, Kenzie helped me this year. Well, she's a chef, Jamie. I mean, <laughs> I know. But everybody else is like, is there anything I can help with? And I'm just like, I mean. Well, because it's such a humongous task, everybody feels bad just milling around and eating, you know, so they want to help. And the other thing is, you know, th- there's timing for everything. So yes, it's just that like, is true. you know, can I cut mm-hmm. a vegetable or anything? I'm like, well, I'm not cutting vegetables right now. You know, I, I mean, I. I, I don't do the potatoes right now. I'm not chopping any vegetables for the stuffing because I'm not doing them then. Right. When I do the Brussels sprouts, I'm going to do them all at the same time. And so, you know, and the green beans are literally all I have to do is chop garlic, but I'm going to chop the garlic because I'm going to do it for the Brussels sprouts at the same time. So, I mean, and nobody can chop garlic, you know, really, because if I ask someone to chop garlic, it's going to be like, you know, almond flakes. And so... <laughs> It's just like, no, 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 really, nobody can help. You know, it's just, there's nothing that anyone can really do that is helpful. And I, I feel bad because I don't want to be like selfish, be like, no, you're, you know, but you're it's not, not being like, selfish. You just have, there's a, there's a routine to creating a Thanksgiving dinner. There really is. I mean, unless like there was other people, like if you or Stephanie or or Mackenzie for that matter were there, you guys could prepare like dishes, you know, right. and that would be different. Well, what I did, what I did, well, what does this have to do with Olivia getting a deviled egg? She can't control herself around hard boiled eggs, Jamie. Just give her, just make her like six and just let her have it. Okay, but the thing is, she's not the only one. Everybody likes them. I have I, deviled eggs addicts in my house as well. The gas is... Oh. Is, <laughs> It's it's just it'll kill the house them. will be full with so much ethanol or whatever or not ethanol the uh, paint will peel <laughs> like and it was cold that day I mean oh, the windows yeah. and doors you know probably would freeze to death and right it's just and she's not a lady she does not no. you know well, one she can't hold it in two she wouldn't even go to the bathroom and when she does she puts her butt in the bathroom and sticks her head out and she's laughing and i'm like olivia i'm like go in the bathroom nobody wants to watch you put your butt in the door and then be like ha, ha, ha. i was you know? reading an article to, uh, the other day be- preparing for this i was reading an article about thanksgiving and stuff <laughs> and someone 
well we're gonna talk about this probably next show because it's really fucking funny but somebody said i had no idea that my husband had a deviled egg addiction or even (laughs) even a hard-boiled egg addiction she goes i made hard-boiled eggs because a lot of people just like them for breakfast or lunch or whatever well it's like it's a good source of protein i absolutely love hard-boiled eggs and and uh, deviled eggs i do love but i just like hard-boiled eggs in general because i like egg salad and stuff but anyway so she said she's like i had no idea that he had an addiction she's like i made like 15 um hard-boiled eggs and he ate them and he he forgot to breathe that he loved them so much he was eating them so quickly that he forgot to breathe i'm like that sounds like a, a person who had to fight for their food as a child <laughs> it reminds me of friends get... the friends episode where i think uh jennifer anderson's character she was talking to ross she's like why do you eat so fast he's like i grew up with monica if you didn't eat fast you didn't eat yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> anyway, so my Thanksgiving was very interesting. Okay. Just like you said, all of the food prep, there's a timing for everything. So this mm-hmm. year I decided, you know what? I am going to do a lot of food prep the day before. So there's mm-hmm. really nowhere to go. And I had all of the food already. So I decided to pre-cut the Brussels sprouts and I made cranberry yeah. sauce and I did all the food prep that takes time in the morning or the next day that I could a lot for doing other things. I probably should have done that. Yeah. So, but I was able to do it because Mackenzie was there and I yeah. will explain why Kenzie, she stayed with us for two weeks and I'll explain to you why, but mm-hmm. so she was there. So she was helping and it was fine. It was really, you know, it was like in the afternoon or whatever. And then there was a knock on the door and so I'm like, oh, it's probably a package because we've been ordering a lot of packages for Christmas because we don't really, there's nowhere to really go right now because things are kind of moderate, modified yeah. for shopping. And so I go and I open up the door and lo, my ex best friend <laughs> is at the door. Shut the fuck up. The day before Thanksgiving. And here's the thing. Luckily, I had done my makeup that day because... As the mantra goes, Paula, even though you may not adhere to it as religiously, always look moderate or to uh, the best you can look, lip and clip, because you never know who you're going to run into <laughs> when, you know, throughout the day. You may run into an ex-lover or a, an arch nemesis or someone, and you're going to be glad that you have lip on and your hair is in a clip. So here's the thing with this ex-friend is she was very unhealthy uh, towards the end of our friendship. She and didn't it, even text first? No. Um, or but, call? But, I'd be like, what are you doing here? God! Well, well, why don't you let me tell the story, All right, Paula? all right, all right. Sorry. I'm angry. I know, and I don't know why. <laughs> so, because anyway. It irritates me that people show up unannounced. So, she has been trying to get in touch with me for months. And I've been blowing her off because I'm like, no, the friendship's over. I just want to like move on, move forward. It was a, you know, the end of our relationship. Our friendship was really awful and toxic and all the buzzwords that you use. And she ended it. And right. so, so anyway, cause she sent me this truly nasty letter. Mm-hmm. And so she shows up at my door. She was really unhealthy the last time I saw her. I was aware of the fact that she had been getting healthy. Um, she clearly had some kind of procedure. So she probably weighs no more than 130 pounds. She literally wow. lo- she literally looks the way she did when I met her when we were 18. And mm-hmm. so now I'm, I have to say, I'm very happy for her. Very happy. I did not want her to die. You know, I I mean, I may not want to be friends with her anymore, but I didn't want to hear that her health caused her demise. And so this health improvement, did this include mental health as well or? Oh, yes. And so she came to the door. She turned around. And when I saw her, my first thought was, oh, my God, she's dying because she's so, so frail looking. She had her sunglasses on, which is my move. I do the same thing. And so I said, hi. And I knew who she was, but it was shocking. I had heard that she had gotten very small, but I was, it was still shocking to see. And, but she looks exactly the same. I mean, you know, she looks like she did, like she's always looked, you know? So anyway, I don't, at this point, I'm like, what the fuck are you doing here? Mm -hmm. (laughs) I'm like, why are you here? And I'm like, Hey, what's up? And she's just like, well, you know, I've been trying to, I'm like, yeah, why are you here? I'm, I've wished you the best, like a gajillion times. Like, I don't know what, what you want. And she's like, oh, I'm done. And she gave me like a pile of photos from when we used to hang out together. And 
I have copies of all these photos, you know, because back in the day you had to go to Target and you could get doubles of everything, Mm -hmm. you know. So I had a lot of these photos already, but she was using this. This was her third pile of photos, by the way, that she's come by and dropped off over the last six months or so. So I was like, okay, I'm like, fine. So I, I was looking through them, but not really. And I'm like, well, what do you want? And she said, well, nothing. I just wanted to give you these. I just wanted you to know that I moved away. I'm like, great. Are you in Oregon or are you gone? Like, what do I have to not worry about running into your ass when I go to the store? Like, why are you here? And she was like, Ugh, and she turns around to leave. And then she stops herself and she turns around. She goes, OK, look, I'm here to apologize for the letter. And I was like, oh, I said, yeah, it was really shitty of you. And she's like, yes, it was. And she's like, I am not only physically working on myself, but mentally I've been in therapy and some other things. She clearly is in a, like a, maybe a 12 step program and she was making amends. Um, She said, I've, I'm everywhere, but you, I've been able to, you know, move forward and I can't move forward with you because I need to apologize. So when I heard that, I knew that she was making amends. And so as as easy it is for our for us to just tell her to fuck off and say you don't get nothing from me. No, I wouldn't do that. I didn't do that. And I was like once I heard her do that, I was like, "Oh, fuck. You know, I'm not an asshole. I mean, I am, but not like that. And I'm not someone I couldn't stop someone from trying to repair themselves. Exactly. Exactly. Because I get it, you know? Me too. And so I so when she said that, I looked at her and I went, okay, I know what this is. This is about forgiving herself as much as trying to, you know, alleviate the guilt or whatever actions that she did in the throes of an addiction that she feels terrible about. Well, she's just trying to... She's, she's trying to be a better person and a different person. She's trying to tie up the loose ends of... of the scorched earth that she left behind. Exactly. And, and she can only move forward once she repairs those right. bridges. Not saying that she can fix them. Right. But she at least has to try and and do what she can to amend them. Exactly. So when she said that, I said, oh, uh, all right. And I said, well, you know, I, I will tell you that it took me a few days to even open the letter because I knew when I opened it, I already knew what it was going to say and that I knew our friendship was over. So I but I said, but I opened it anyway. And I said, and I actually started writing you a letter, but I thought, you know what? I'm not going to pile onto this. There's no reason to create more anger and hurt and, neg- you know, negativity. So I just let it go. And I wished you well. And, you know, I'm not going to lie. Her husband reached out to me many times about how he missed us and, you know, wished that things were different and stuff like that. But uh, ultimately, I said, you know what? I'll give you the forgiveness that you're looking for because I know that you're clearly working on being different and she you know not getting into personal issues she definitely you know told me some things that she realized about her parenting her marriage her friendships etc and so I said you know what I'm not going to be the person to not give you the peace that you need to move forward so we talked for about 90 minutes um yeah we talked a really long time we she started crying and then that made me cry (laughs) it was like stupid I was so bad The thing is, is that, I mean, yeah, you guys had a a rough, abrupt, you know, ending. Yes. I mean, well, not abrupt. I mean, it was, it was, it was a long time coming, Paula. But the problem was, is that you guys had such a long history. We do have a long history. And that Mm -hmm. was undeniable. And so it's difficult to close a chapter, I guess, you know? Well, I mean, in any other person, she's literally the only person outside of my sisters that I have granted so much leniency. And I don't know why, because we're not at all alike. We see things very differently. But anyway, so after some long chat, she's like, well, I don't expect, she goes, I definitely don't want what we had before or anything like that. And I said, well, me either. It was, it was incredibly unhealthy at the end. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I, you know, and she said some things that I thought were really great and recognized some of the things she had been doing with our friendship that was not very helpful for me to be her friend like you know it was damaging and stuff well it wasn't productive it well it it wasn't a mutual friendship anymore she was using me to you know unleash her distaste for life and you kind of felt like a punching bag after a while well that and i and really the big thing was it's like you know i can tell my sisters everything literally everything i said but i stopped telling you stuff 
because mm-hmm. you were not trustworthy anymore. And and I can't have that in my life. I tr- have to trust everyone 100%. And I just didn't trust her. So anyway, we went through all of our damage. I said, look, I said, I don't want it either. It is definitely, she's definitely different and trying very hard, which I appreciate very much. And I'm like, you know what? Baby steps, you know, uh, the majority of our friendship was was great. And so we'll just see what happens. But I'm like, this is the day before Thanksgiving. The day before Thanksgiving. Well, she probably, if she booed, she was probably in town. So she probably just thought like, if I don't do this now, I may never do it. So. Right. And so when, when she left... Uh, Kenzie, of course, ran into Dar- Daryl and she's like, oh, my God, get out. You know, she's mm-hmm. like, it was like, oh, my God. So, so Daryl watching you guys on ring. No, he turned it off. He was he, oh, was, okay. he was gracious enough to turn it off. So he not me. I would have like cranked up the volume. Of course like, you would fuck? have. And honestly, <laughs> you would have to. Paula, honestly, I would have I would have hoped that you would. So you could give me feedback afterwards. <laughs> well, I would have been like, you know, in the sprint position, like I'm ready to go anytime. <laughs> I know. You, you would have to. You would have had tennis yes. shoes on and be like, you oh, know, please. Had, had a knife in your pocket like, we're going to jam anytime. <laughs> like, dun, dun, yeah, we have our dun, when dun, you're red yeah. jet, you're red jet for <laughs> like a boy like that who killed your brother. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But no, he didn't. He turned it off. But anyway. Stephanie would have been behind the trash cans like, I'll get it from this angle. You get it from that. <laughs> I know. So I'm not going to get into it on the show, but I'll tell you later that our stepdad, okay. our stepdad texted me and apologized. Shut for some the fuck up. Truly terrible behavior that he gave me earlier this year. And that cap, that happened hours after she left. And I said, what the fuck is going on? Am I dying? Are people like getting right with me because I'm going to be dead? Like what is happening? What movie is it where she's like, am I having a nightmare? <laughs> what was that? God. Oh, it was uh, Pretty in Pink where that, that snob oh. was laying in the bed and she was making out with Blaine. She's like, and then the she's like, your no, name not is Blaine. Jim. Um, it was like Jep or something like that. Or, uh, oh, yeah. Uh, shit, what was his name? They were totally making out, and um, I don't know why, but the two were like sitting front row in the bed, like in front <laughs> that of the was bed. Bizarre. And then she like looks Steph. over. Steph, his like, name was Steph. Steph, that's right. Mm-hmm. And then she's sitting there, and she looks over at Molly Ringwald. And she's like, "Oh my god!" She's like, "Am I having a nightmare?" <laughs> <laughs> And she's like, no, uh, I'm in. She goes, I'm in. I'm in gym with you. And she goes, your name's Jim. <laughs> I love that scene. It's it's she's, one of the best. Every time I see that movie, I always know I'm not the Molly Ringwald. Uh, no, <laughs> we are definitely not. We are definitely not the Molly at all. I'd be like, Blaine, uh, fucking get over here, dude. Let's do this. Like, she's like, shut up, Benny. She's like, you're an asshole, Blaine. <laughs> you're an asshole, Blaine. <laughs> Come on, let's get you some food. I don't want to. He's like, you drink too much. Let's get you some food. She's like, I'm not hungry. That's such a great movie. Oh, my God. And he's all, he's all, you're such a slut. She's like, you love it. (laughs) Anyway, so that was Wednesday. And then we had our, we had our turkey day and it was great. We initially, before things kind of went from bad to worse on the pandemic, we had actually had a few extras that were going to come that had been quarantining. And we obviously disinvited everybody. And so it was just our kids and Tyler's significant other because they had been quarantining together. Right. And so that was it. Well, what happened was Thanksgiving, Kenzie, my daughter, got a call that her roommate's sister was hanging out at her house with somebody who tested positive for COVID. Are you And did not bother to tell anybody. So he exposed five families while they were hanging out. So we had to wait for all these COVID tests before Kenzie could go back because her roommate had been exposed to somebody who potentially has COVID. And so when did she find out? Thanksgiving. Oh, she found out because the parents called and said, hey, our son was at your house, apparently. And by the way, he tested positive for COVID today. And that was two days ago. And so uh, everybody, of course, was like, motherfucker. You know, I mean, there were so many calls this this poor family had to make because he didn't stay home when they told him to. He took off and, you know, he was being a total shitbag about it. So nobody wears masks. Of course not. And And so they let strangers. Why why do they let strangers come over to their house? Well, because they're in their 20s, I guess. I don't know. No, she's she's a teenager. No, her parents weren't home. They were working because her mom's a nurse. And then her dad, I don't know. But anyway, God. (laughs) 
Yeah. So anyway, no one knew that she had done this. And so that all came to pass, you know, the day before Thanksgiving. So was Mackenzie allowed to come over? Or? So Kenzie had not seen her roommate in two days because of their, their work schedules. Mm-hmm. And so she, I said, you have a window right now because it takes two days to become contagious once you've been exposed, if you're going to get it. And you haven't seen her in 18 hours. And she's going to, if she's going to get it, she's going to be contagious like tomorrow. So now two weeks later, Mackenzie gets to go home. <laughs> so she's been with us for two weeks waiting oh. for all these results to come back. But because there's such a backlog, it's taken days and days and days for everybody to get their results well, did she get a test herself no no reason no reason everybody oh, in her house just gotten a test well there well we talked about it initially but her only exposure was someone who was potentially exposed but wasn't contagious when she was at the house and wasn't even home so she was never exposed to anybody who could have potentially had it so that was our thanksgiving um, but it was still great. You know, it's always great having the kids because our, uh, you know, our chats at the dinner table are so interesting. I saw you're like, oh, we went a whole 30 minutes before we started talking about death. <laughs> well, here. Well, first of all, we have this annual tradition. The kids have an annual tradition where they decide who's the favorite child for the year. Oh, Tyler's the, this year. Tyler's reigning king. He apparently he's always nominated as the favorite child really? at the table. Yes. But this year. Mackenzie won. Really? Yes. And so that's, that's kind of rare because she's like the she's and it was unan and it was unanimous. And so wow. Tyler was like, "Wait a minute, ah, uh-uh, no!" And Daryl goes, "Are you daring not to concede, Tyler?" And yeah, really? He's, okay. and he's like Trump. He's like, "I want to recount," and I'm like, "We can recount it all fucking night. You lose." And he, it was just so hilarious that he would not. You concede. can recount, but she is still the child elect. <laughs> It was so hilarious. So we did that. And then he goes, don't forget, mom. I'm the one that's going to wipe your ass when you're old. I said, Tyler, you will never wipe my ass in a million years. I will never have a paid person to do that. Yes. And I said that I go, I will find a way to save up enough money to have my own ass wiper. It won't be you. He goes, but I would do it. I go, you're not doing it. And I go, and you're still not the favorite this year. No matter what. <laughs> so. I'd be like, child, whatever. I'd be like, Tyler, whatever fantasy you have about wiping my ass when I'm old, get over it. It's not going to happen. He's just trying to say he would do anything. And I'm like, I appreciate, I appreciate the thought, but it will never happen. If I so. said that to my kids right now, they'd be like, mom, no, we'll, we'll hire someone. <laughs> Thank you. I, I mean, that's what I want. Based on that, by the way, I wanted to tell you, uh, Daryl and I watched the new Kevin Hart stand-up special that's on Netflix. Oh, yeah. He's not my most favorite style of comedy, but he, there's enough in his comedy that I laugh pretty hard. So I get through it because I appreciate and I like like it. But he said something about uh, when he was in this really bad car accident last year, he was basically yeah. paralyzed. And when, when he, he broke was, his neck, I think he was in the hospital. He couldn't feel his arms or his legs. And he goes and it was eight days after surgery. And I they said, we can't let you go home until you can poop. And so, and I started laughing because I'm like, well, that sounds familiar. And so. Well, you didn't have to poop. You just had to I had fart. to pass gas. But he, it was the same thing. He's like, I had to, they had to make sure my, my, my intestines were working. And right, so I couldn't right, leave. Right. He goes, eight days, I'm constipated. Then finally, but there was always someone with me. Finally, I had a 20 minute window where I was completely alone. And then all of a sudden, I was like, holy shit, I have to go to the bathroom. So he goes, so I'm hitting my button. Help, help, someone help. <laughs> His nurse is a 60-year-old Mexican man. And he comes in. He goes, what's going on, man? And he's like, I, have, I finally have to poop. He goes, all right. So he rolls him over, and there's a, there's a toilet that's sitting next to him. Like a commode, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so he sit, So he, he goes, but I can't feel anything. So he has to set me on the commode. <laughs> and so he goes, and then he stands here. He's like, all right, you can do it, man. He's like, oh, <laughs> what? He goes, and he's like, he's giving me, like, pointers, and he's, he's encouraging me. And it's just like, oh, my God. He goes, at this point... I can't hold it, so I'm just going. And then he's like, let it go, man. You can do it. Just let it go. Let it all go. It's good for you. It's good for you. And so he's like, oh, my God. He goes, so finally when he's done, he goes, I'm going to wipe your ass real good. And so he's because he goes, I can't feel anything because my arms and legs are completely paralyzed. And so he goes, so he lifts me up by my right arm, lays me over my bed. He goes, and I don't know why. He goes, but the ass area is completely awake. He goes, I have to feel everything. He goes, and I started crying <laughs> because he goes, this is, he goes, this is the 
like this is rock bottom, right? This is what this feels like. <laughs> He's like, this is this is it. This is this the is worst. the worst it's going to get. Like. And- yeah, he thought I can't get an erection, and is, I'm having someone wipe my ass. But I can feel my asshole being wiped by a Mexican. <laughs> this, and this is aside from prison. This is about this it. is about the worst it's gonna get. <laughs> and then he and he goes, "Hey man, he goes, you're my first famous ass." <laughs> <laughs> like wow, like, like for real. Take a picture, idiot. <laughs> He's got, got an Instagram selfie of him wiping Kevin Hart's ass. Oh like, my hey! god! Yeah. But oh he, my god! I laughed so hard. So funny. So I think you would actually, 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 double actually, so, you would like it. It's really funny. Did you repeat the story to Daryl about you know how he had to leave the hospital, like the premises? Oh, he knows. He absolutely. <laughs> we turned and looked at each other. I'm like, yeah, see, see. <laughs> Just give someone a minute. Give him a minute. I bet I could have gone home three days earlier if you had just fucking left and unhitched yourself to me. I probably would have been home. It was so unspoken. I just said, yeah. to I'm like, why don't you just go home and check on my kids? Like, he's like, he's like, no, he's like, I just, I really feel like I should be. I'm like, Daryl, leave. <laughs> I'm just like, and I'm like, I'm like, and I don't mean like cafeteria lobby. I'm like, I'm like, get the leave. hell out of the facility. I'm like, you have, you have to leave the city. You, <laughs> like the premises. You gotta you go. You have to go like five miles away. And oh, this is why God. I'm like, I'm not, she's not going to be able to do this if you're in the building. It's true. Even in the parking lot. I'm I like, need to know that he's away. completely I'm gone. Like, you have to drive away. And then when you get home, you have to call, let the kids talk, and then hang up. And I'm So like, she knows you're literally not anywhere near her. She knows you're home in the house with the children. And I said, <laughs> within 15 minutes, she'll be fine. It was within 20 minutes, Paula. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. And I said, and I said, I, ha- I have no doubt she'll make progress. <laughs> it's so true. So, and it was true. <laughs> oh, yeah. So true. Okay. So in addition to all of this, you actually celebrated a birthday. I did. Yes. You yes, I are. Did. Do you t- do you say how old you are or no? I do. I did. You're 42. <laughs> yes, I turned 42. I had to have a conversation with Victor because I'm like, look, I know you do this every day. I know you <laughs> think it's cute. And I know you think you're trying to do me a solid. Right. I said, but I, I really hate it. And he's like, what? I'm like, you always put a different number on. Oh, like, like 29 or, or something. And he's like, because they said, how old are you going to be, mom? I said, I'll be 42. And he's like, no, she's not. She's going to be 37. I'm like, okay. I'm like, look. Let's talk. And I said, <laughs> please don't do that anymore. He's like, why? I said, because I said, every time you do that, the kids are like, wait, what? I thought she was this. And they're like, no, no. And then I'm like, or I, I'm like, no, I, I'm not 37. Dad just does that to be funny or to make me feel better. I said, I'm actually 42. And I said, and it just becomes a long drawn out conversation talking more about how older I really am. Right. And I said, instead of just saying I'm 42, you know, let's just blow out the candles and move on. I said, so let's just say what it is, okay? Let's, yeah, let's, let's just, just be honest. So, but this year, instead of, you know, just buying a four and a two, he put 42 candles on the cake. <laughs> <laughs> it came out, and I thought to myself, I'm like, well, why don't, why don't I just embolemize myself like a monk <laughs> and, you know, just end it right now? Because the cake literally looked like it was on fire. <laughs> And, oh yeah I and actually it did kind of gather a small flame in the center and he's like oh my arm and i'm just like jesus <laughs> actually he said that yeah. after i blew out the candles because i blew them out and he's just like because ah! like a flame oh, God. you know i got it all out in one breath not shocking, well that's good but, well i have mad mouth skills but. yes that is true so i got i'm not going to really get into my birthday there's no okay. point but because we know i just have the best the best birthday <laughs> So I got these adorable silver hoop earrings that I had been wanting. Mm-hmm. They're not as big as yours. Um, oh, Olivia, okay. she picked them out because oh. uh, I had been saying, like, I love, like, the J-Lo style hoop earrings. Yes. Mine are the 50 millimeters. Okay. What do you have, like, 70 or 80 or? I don't know math, but they're, they're two. I have, a, I have two pairs of two inch, and then I have. A three-inch pair. Okay. I said, I'm all, Angie Jamie has, like, the ones that come down to her chichis and stuff. <laughs> and, those and, are hard and, to wear, by the way. I only, I've only worn those a couple of times. They're, they're, yeah, I struggle. and Olivia's, Olivia's like, yeah, I know. And so <laughs> she, I said, I don't want those kind. I said, I can't, I can't wear those. Plus, 
whoever pierced my ears in the beginning, mm. they practically pierced them on like the nipple of my earlobe. Oh, and so that sucks. I, I probably should get them re-pierced at yeah. some point if I even can because they're so low. You can. So sometimes I'll wear them in my second hole just to make it look like they're normal. Oh, they're yeah. so low on the first, but it actually only looks good on one ear. The other ear, it does look like I'm wearing it in the second hole. So <laughs> I can't win. My ears are fucked up. Anyways, so I got the silver hoops and they're a perfect size. I love them. Of good. course, I wore after, you know, two hours, my ears itched and they're, st- <laughs> they're sterling silver though. So I don't. That's weird. I don't. I think my ears just get irritated because I, I don't well, usually wear true. earrings that often. Although I've never had a problem with gold. So I don't well, that's know. That's something to consider. Everyone well, should think of that. It's probably just my body. It's just like, I'm sorry, this isn't expensive enough. So <laughs> <laughs> That's about right, by the way, for all of us. Figure. So, and then, um, but I got some gorgeous flowers from you, which I absolutely loved. And then later in the evening, well, what was so funny is, is um, <laughs> you sent the card. You said something like, uh, yeah, like, we're going to send a message. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. <laughs> it was Sebastian Maniscalco bit. Yes. And um, I loved it because I started laughing. I and knew I'm it. Sure, I'm sure whatever florists are just like, okay, whatever. You I know. know. <laughs> I thought about that. <laughs> so then I posted the picture on Instagram and I'm like, we're going to murder these motherfuckers. <laughs> and I'm like, we're putting antifreeze on baloney. Baloney. I know. And so I told that to Ryan and he's like, Papa, why? Why, Papa? <laughs> <laughs> So then later in the evening, like it was almost eight o'clock, I think. Yeah. We got a knock on the door and I was like, what? And That's so never good news. Well, I was just like, who the hell is that? And Someone so, knocks on um, the door after hour, after the sun sets, it isn't good news. And so I looked out and I saw a FedEx truck driving away and I'm like, oh, I'm like, that's, that's strange. I'm like, maybe I'm like, did somebody order something from Amazon? Ryan's like, No. And I'm like, well, I didn't. So I opened the door and there was an Amazon box down there. And I'm like, hmm. And I'm just like, well, maybe I got a present. I'm like, that's that's <laughs> fantastic. Yeah. So I opened it and there was a gift bag and I took it out and I'm like, this feels like a book, but I'm not sure. And I read the tag and it says, I'm your Huckleberry. And then it was from you. And yeah. I'm just like, oh, like that's so sweet. And then I would put the card down and I was thinking, I'm your Huckleberry. And then I'm like, <gasps> and then Brian's like, what? I'm like, I don't know. And I started screaming, and I was tearing up in the bag, and I'm like, it's the bag cover by under me! And so I was so excited. I know. Because I don't know why. I was just, and then, of course, I was dumb, because I'm just like, I didn't think this was coming out until next year. And then I called you, I called you, and I was just like, I didn't think it was coming out until next year. And you're like, Paul, this came out last year. And I'm yeah. like, oh. A year ago. But, I, you know, initially I was going to get it to you for Christmas, and I'm like, no. I'm going to get it to her now. That way she has it and she can read. And, you know, when there's nothing going on, she'll have something to look at. Yes, I can't wait. I'm so excited. Cool. So. Now, I will say this to segue really quick because we have to have to do our ugly and awkward moments. We're running out of time. But yeah, I don't know if you're aware of this, which it's a bit surprising that you're not. The new Netflix series for Selena came out yesterday. Oh, it did. It did. And so I watched episode one. I believe there's eight or nine episodes. They're between 45 and 35 minutes long. I watched episode one and I'm not sure <laughs> it's going to be good. I'm a little concerned. Uh, is um, it like teeny boppery? No, 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 no. Not at all. Um, it's Here's the thing. Because the only... Uh, movie that we are I mean if now I liked Selena before the before she died but I didn't I didn't discover her until like very soon after you know before she was killed and so I didn't I wasn't a fan forever I was a fan for about two years and then she was killed well, because she was working on her trans, she had her crossover barely just album. crossed over, um, yes. and it was with her medley, I think. So I had her, I had her crossover album, and I had I had Bitty Bitty Bomb Bomb as well. Yeah. And so I bought that second after I bought the Selena Dreaming of You CD. Anyway, I, well, and the Dreaming of You CD came out after she died, I think. It so, did. It did. And I think I think it was the Houston live show. The that Houston came out. Yeah. Right. Anyway, so I was like, well, I'm kind of excited to see, you know, how this is going, how this is going to go. And so it, it kicks off. There's a few new 
uh, perspectives that I wasn't expecting. But I was telling Daryl, I said, you know, only based on the only the first episode is when she's eight years old and they're really mm-hmm. struggling. They really are showing the struggle financially that the family had. But so far, the real focus is on the family as a whole, not Selena, which is expected because she was only freaking eight. Mm-hmm. So she doesn't have a whole lot to say. But the dad, you're really getting an idea of how prideful he was, how he was so determined to make this family band something and the transition of deciding that they had to start singing Tejano instead of pop hits. And interestingly, I don't know why I focused on this so much, but the sister Susie or Suzette, Mm -hmm. she was a giant Eeyore. Like she hated the band. She hated doing drums. She hated all of it. She hated how poor they were and how they had to sleep on the floor in a double wide with their family. I'm like, it was rough. And mm-hmm. I think that's totally appropriate. She was like 13. So that's exactly how a 13 year old would behave, you know? So they were just, it was just, you know, when they lost the restaurant, all of that's in there. Yeah. And um, in the but, first episode, really? Yeah, they go through, a, they're getting, th- they want to get through this part of it because the rest of it is when she's starting to like become famous. So is this like a, like a, like a docuseries? Yes. Well, okay, okay. no, 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 no. It's fictionalized. I mean, they're the actress is well, from the Walking Dead. Well, that's what I mean. Dead. Is it's 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 not going to be like a show. It's going to be like a like a mini series kind of it's, thing. It's this the way they're the way they're doing it is like this. It's called part one, and then there's nine episodes. So I okay. assume that there will be a part two and whatever. So I don't know right. how. The thing is, is we don't know a lot about Selena. And what I'm really starting to realize is they were such an average American family that there's not a whole lot of drama to stretch this out. I'm also starting to recognize how incredibly good the Selena movie was because Mm -hmm. it is really hard. It was really hard for me initially to, to watch it and not compare it to the film. But I'm hopeful that when this, you know, when the, when I watch the next episode, you know, I'm just such a huge fan of our culture anyway, because we were so deprived of it as children yeah. that I really am starting to realize how much we actually had that our parents didn't label as this is our culture. I mean, we really were raised very Mexican, very Hispanic, and we yeah. just didn't realize it and until because we were, our dad was so ashamed of being Mexican. Well, right. So he tried to de- be anything but Mexican. Right. He, Although... Some things he did inherently that he didn't realize. Exactly. Yeah. And so anyway, I'm not sure if I can say that I'm enjoying it or that it's good. The acting's good, but it's just, it's, I feel like it's very much like I've seen this already. So I, I don't know, but I'm, we're also hardcore fans. And I'm wondering if like hardcore fans will feel the same way. Like, well, we already knew all this. I mean, give us something new and exciting to look at, you know? So I think that's why they're really focusing on the family unit versus just Selena. So we'll see. Well, so with this particular, like, I know with the movie, the mm-hmm. family was, like, totally involved. They're involved um, in this one. But how much, though? A lot. The the okay. sister, the sister, I believe, is is really involved. She was, like, spearheaded to to be the, the familial voice. Okay, so that's different, though, because the parents in the movie, they were the ones that were in charge. Which might explain why Susie has more of an uh, of a personality. Well, and probably why she's revealing things that probably weren't revealed in the first part. Because if the dad was so prideful, there's no way in hell he would have talked about how poor they were. It's possible. But, you know, it's funny is that back in the, the 80s, if you were on food stamps because of the recession, everybody was ashamed. It was not something that people talked about. So it's different now. Well, so. and a, a Mexican father would oh, never, would please. never. There's a scene. People... In fact, there is a scene where they had to get on food stamps because they lost their restaurant, Papa Gallo's. And so Mm -hmm. they were not only are they living with his brother in their double wide, but now they're on food stamps. And so that was never mentioned in the movie. He goes at night, like he goes to like a Winco that's open 24 hours a day. So Mm -hmm. he goes at like 11 o'clock at night and he takes his AB and Susie with him, Suzette, Mm -hmm. and they're getting all the food and the AB goes, I didn't even know stores were open this late. He goes, yeah, it's better. You know, the, the dad is saying, yeah, it's better. You know, there's no, but no crowds and you can just get what you want and you don't have to worry about it. And they're like, yeah, I guess. And they're like, and they're like, we're so tired. And so he pulls out the food stamps to pay for everything. Cause they got everything on the list. And he said, he pulls them out and the kids look at him. Cause they're like, oh, this is so sad. You know, that this sucks that we have food stamps. And he goes, you know what? He goes, I am a taxpayer. He goes, I have always paid the government. 
when they ask me to. And now when we need help, the government helps us out. That's how this relationship works. He goes, now he hands the, the money over to his kids. He goes, I'll be in the car. And he oh, like, see. wouldn't even, he couldn't even go to the checkout. See, that's more American because the opposite would have happened with us is dad would have sent us to the car and and he would have dealt with it and and he and he wouldn't have even told us and actually That's true. he he probably would have went to the grocery store with our stepmom and just kept us home and then the next yep. morning when we woke up there just would have been food in the refrigerator. Yeah, that's true. He didn't want us to know. We would have never known anything. Yeah, he we that's would true. have not known a thing. And yeah, like I said, like because of this movie, mm-hmm. even are her parents still alive or No, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, okay. Everybody is. There's, yeah. There's no way in hell that this show would have ever shown <laughs> that the kids were sleeping on the floor of a double wide and that they were using food stamps. There's no way in fuck that that would have happened. <laughs> yeah. I'm just it, saying because well, like dad, true, true Mexican families. Yeah. I don't care how old you are. You don't disrespect <laughs> that ever. Well, I don't know. I mean, I, I mean, I guess I can do some research to see who's involved in the show, but it's pretty accurate and I think it's appreciated. I, I think it's it really what it highlights is how incredibly successful they became. There has been some criticisms about it as far as uh, people and you and I have talked about this before, but there are people are like they're just cashing in on their daughter's image. And now it's like she's such a caricature of who she was and all this stuff. And I'm like, you know what, motherfuckers? People are constantly trying to take advantage of people's image and likeness and make money off of it. And if this is a way to protect their daughter's image and likeness, then that's what they have to fucking do. And it's not greedy. It's it's just protecting their family. I don't I've never felt one second that they are trying to cash in on Selena ever. But I don't know. I mean, maybe you don't agree with me, but I, I think that they're protecting her personally. I think the movie was fine. I'm, I'm not sure about this show. I'm not I, so far from what you've told me. I'm, I'm really not comfortable with the things that they're talking about. It's one episode, Paula. No, no, no. But I'm just saying just from like the Latina culture. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't like. Well, what. I mean, I'm I am telling you my perspective on it. I'm not saying but it's because we have a Mexican father and watching it, it was like watching a non-abusive Mexican dad. Like it's like, it's so ingrained in the, this machismo is so ingrained in the culture. And it's not like that, like a thing where they're like, Oh, look how great he is. It's like, this is something he struggled with. And it's, I know, but what I'm saying is, is that if there was family involved in doing the mm-hmm. show, yeah. I can't, I, from a true Mexican family, there's no way they would have approved showing. Well, you don't know that. You have no idea. You have no idea. Okay. If, if dad was normal and (laughs) he was approving of us doing a show of our family, you think he would have been okay. Us saying, Hey, we're going to talk about filming that scene where we all slept in the double wide on the floor. (laughs) Maybe dad would have been like, no, you're not. Well, anyway, I, I, I think that's a bit of a projection. The show it's, I've only seen one episode, so I don't know how it goes out. The one thing it does show is that he is absolutely resolute that this family has talent that should be recognized beyond their garage. And he does everything he can to make that happen. He works so hard to do it. And, you know, when you're dealing with your family, it's like, like there's even a time when he was initially in the band and he's like, you know what? I can't be in the band. I look weird. I'm a dad. It's, it doesn't look right. And so like, he's already thinking ahead of how this is going to go. And I mean, it's brilliant. What well, he, he did. wasn't wrong, though, because no. I, I think he did recognize that his children were special. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think that, you know, we've even talked about this as, you know, when we were younger, we think that we all probably had some kind of special abilities to be unique. And, you know, we were just disappointed that our parents didn't, you know, cultivate. Sure. You know, especially as sisters, you right. know, that we probably could have done I don't know what we would have done, but something. Sure. Because we we do have a unique dynamic and mm-hmm. it probably could have been fruitful in some you know capacity. Unfortunately, none of us can sing, but other than that. Who said that? <laughs> You're Just... full of crap. I can sing fine. Okay. All right, Selena, you go right ahead. Oh, this is coming from the one who thought she was fucking Ann Wilson in what? Paul's I did not. Oh, gra- oh no. Guitar you room. Not- no, that was not my doing. 
I was recruited. Whatever. I was forced to do that for a I year, heard you, Paula. And you were fine with it. What was I supposed to do? What was I supposed to say? No, I am not singing. Anyways, I mean, we Stephanie, enjoy singing. She probably thinks she's the best anyone. Who, Allison? If, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was saying Stephanie. Oh, Stephanie. She thinks oh, she's so Anita funny. Baker. That's hilarious. Anyway, I'm going to keep watching it. <laughs> <laughs> no you should yeah i'm definitely going to i mean you should too but you never watch anything but murder so oh god i can't remember that no the last thing you know what i almost rented white knights <laughs> what <laughs> let it go man <laughs> what, like what go the past <laughs> watch something current i don't like anything current it all s- stupid you haven't watched anything current nothing like what like what like the Kevin Hart special or the Selena show or. Okay. You're I, talking about things that just came out in like the last week. <laughs> so anyway. All right. Um, do you have any ugly and awkward moments? You know, I, I, I know I did, but mm. um, let me think. Okay. I did. Let me think here. Well, I had one last night, but it was kind of stupid. All right. Let's do some ugly and awkward moments of the week then. to show her movies from when we were growing up yeah that because oh, yeah. i think she likes to feel a part of like the sisterhood and everything because she doesn't have a sister mm-hmm. and she she likes our dynamic and so yeah. she likes to feel like you know if she could be a part of it like you know what did, what movies did you guys watch or what did you do Aww. and so i always show her like little movies that we watch like we started watching some kind of wonderful the other night ryan was way oh, into it you know i um, struggle with that movie i love that movie so bad I, I really want to show them 16 Candles, but it, it's not oh. on right now. It's coming up, though, so I'm, it's, on, it's ready to record whenever it comes on. Oh, cool. You know, and they've seen, like, you know, well, Ryan's seen Weird Science, Real Genius. And so I, I asked her, I'm like, well, did you? I, I'm like, I've shown you Grease, too, haven't I? And she's like, no, I don't think so. And so <gasps> what? we're watching. I know, right? And so I think she I'll must have be been a little in winter <laughs> when the snow is on the ground. Oh gosh, you should have seen me. <laughs> and so <laughs> your girl for all seasons. All the year through. Which and which so, season did you want to be? Summer. When you fall in the fall. Oh, you'll I, I even see. was going through that. I'm sick of being a tree. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways. <laughs> We were watching Grease 2. I think I didn't let her watch it before because she was a little too young. Sure. And, um, but, you know, she's 11 now. So, I mean, it's She can it's handle okay. some stuff. She can handle some things. And so we were watching it. And the opening scene, I'm like, because she, she loves High School Musical. And so I'm like, Olivia, oh. can you imagine if school started that way? This I thought she'd OG. be into it. This is and the she's OG like, High School Musical. And she's like, Mom, she's like, I'd be behind that pink car. <laughs> and with my hands on my knees, I'd be like, <sighs> And then she'd be like, and then someone would walk past me and she's like, I'd start doing the twist. Like, hey, hey, how's it going? <laughs> and I, start, I was dying laughing. I'd be hiding she, out of breath. She was hysterical. That's so, so funny. So we get to the bowling scene. I'm like, okay, Olivia. And I paused it. I'm like, this is a very important moment in life. I said, there's going to be a scene here coming up very close. I'm like, we call it the Nogarelli. <laughs> and, and she's like, the what? The I'm Nogarelli. All, it's, I'm all, it's the Nogarelli. Mm-hmm. I said, there's, there's two parts to it. I said, one, there's the note. And then two, there's the slide. I'm like, at, at some point in your life, I'm like, it takes a lot of practice, but you will be able to do both of them at the same time. And she's like, she's like, can you do this? I'm like, absolutely. And so she's like, I mean, can you show me? I'm like, we'll see. I said, but you have to watch it first. And so we were watching the thing. I'm like, all right. I'm like, Olivia, I'm all here. It comes. Because it's all dun, 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 dun. I'm like, all right, here it comes. And then he's like, you know, and he comes flying down the aisle and she's just like, she's like, oh my God. And she's like, how? she's like, was that really his voice? I'm like, that was him. That was him. And so we were around it, watched it again. And she's like, I want to try that. And so she puts a blanket on there and then she like belly flops down the hallway. And I'm like, Olivia, no, no, no. I'm like, it's on the knees. I'm like, put a pillow down. And so mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know what got into me. I had been dancing and doing all the stuff the whole time. So I think That's I was fine. just full of adrenaline and, sure. you know, piss and vinegar and so i get a running start in the living room <laughs> <laughs> i had shorts and a tank top on and no bra and 
you know, it was like 10 o'clock. And so I get a running start and then I start, ah! you know, that the note. And then I hop on the pillow with my knees. And I guess I had started running too fast because I hit the pillow, but I kind of like biffed it a little bit. And I, oh, no. pop, I popped off it and my knee started skidding <gasps> down the hallway. And then like, it kind of like stopped because, you know, like when skin hits the ground, it just is like, you know, and then I <laughs> fell on my side. Oh, and I no. looked like a, a beached whale. And the worst part is Victor filmed me. <gasps> Where's the video? Oh, he, he made, as soon as he showed me, I'm like, you delete that. I, actually, I took the phone and I deleted it. You didn't <laughs> so even look I, at it? Well, he caught like the, literally the last like two seconds. Paula, you didn't even let me see it? Jamie, no one saw that. Oh. No one. It was the last two seconds of me laying on the ground, flipping <laughs> over to my side. <laughs> Like, so all you saw was like from my my heels up my legs and my body. And I was just like, ah. and I flipped over to the side. Crumbled on the floor with a skin knee from the Nagarelli. I was straight bodied. And so I literally oh looked God. like a beached whale. And I'm like, I'm all, I'm all, you don't leave that immediately. I'm like, what gave you the mindset to even think about doing such a thing. Wow. Like I had a sociopathic look on my face. <laughs> He's like, I'm it deleting terrified it. Him. He's like, I'm deleting it right now. And then I'm just, and then he like, Showed it to me, and I'm and and he's like, here. He's like, it's it's deleted. I'm like, what is that? He's like, it's in the delete section. I'm like, you delete it, delete the, the delete file. It. Come on, man. I said, you Victor. Know. I'm like, I will stab you in the jugular. <laughs> like, so, and not even think twice. And about I said, it. I'm like, I can't even believe you thought to even do such a what thing. Was I'm he like, thinking. He he doesn't think, Jamie. But anyway, so I showed you. I took a picture of my. I still have a massive scab on my knee right Gross. now. Gross. <laughs> That's funny. And so, but I, it was funny because I took a picture of it and I sent it to you guys. And I said, I'm all, this is what happened to my knee when I tried to show Olivia the Nogarelli the other night. And mm -hmm. then I was thinking, I'm like, if anybody ever hacked into our chat, they'd be like, what the fuck What's is the <laughs> What is the Nogarelli? And why is her knee scabbed? Not to like, mention, they wouldn't even be able to pronounce Nogarelli. They'll be like, well, what is this? And not even that, but they'd be like, this is a 42 year old woman. Like, what? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> They'd be like, she biffed it on the pillow doing the Nogarelli and I she don't scraped understand. her knee. Like, who are these people? I know. It's so true. <laughs> uh, well, I'm glad. Well, did she like Grease too? I don't even think we got to finish it because, oh, okay. you know, she, she gets distracted. But I think we got as far. No, we did finish it because we got to the very end and we're like, it's Michael. It's Michael. And the Mr. <laughs> Fear, they're like, Mr. It's Spears Michael. Is like, in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Spears. I love that movie so much. All right. Well, here's my awkward moment. It's not nearly as dramatic as yours. I know. Probably not. No, it was just, I was preparing for Thanksgiving and I went to Costco and Costco has this giant bowl uh, that's covered in plastic on the top of tomatoes, like grape tomatoes. Mm -hmm. And so I was going to make like a grape tomato salad. I was going to put some on the, um, I made a tray of veggies to munch on. Yeah. I picked them up, and what I didn't realize was I had actually opened the corner to look at them really quick. So I picked them up, and I turned it over because I was just carrying it, and they all, all spilled out all over the floor, and it sounded like I dropped a bunch of Super Bowls. And you're like, what was that? And I said, I was laughing so hard at, at my idiocy. And I said, oh, I literally just dropped two pounds of cherry tomatoes all over the floor. And I was laughing. And they all, they don't bounce, by the way. They just crack they just, and fall. Oh, I thought they were going to roll everywhere. They did. I They did. Actually, I took a picture of it because Wait, I'm like, I was at home help. or at Costco? No. Oh, my God. I've done that at Costco. But no. Oh, God. I thought you were at Costco. And I'm like, no, oh, God. No, no. I have done it at Costco, though. I have absolutely done that. No, this was at home, but I I, I, did, I deleted the picture because it didn't turn out very good. But I took a picture. I go, I have to show Paula this. That would be hilarious. So one more thing. Yes. I usually look forward to this every year. I know this is going to sound terrible, but what? I go on Instagram and I do the hashtag Thanksgiving with black families. Oh. I know you've done that, too. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, this year, it was just a regurge of all the memes I've already seen. That's and because nobody can like, get together. And I'm just like, God damn it. I'm like, I was looking for, I was really looking forward to this. You can blame so, the fucking COVID for that. And I was just like, man, I'm like, come on. They're my I favorite. Just, it really was. <laughs> it really was. And yeah, then. Yeah, they're fun. 
So I saw one meme on just Facebook. Someone had taken a picture. It was like this big, giant, like tinfoil casserole. <laughs> it was full of macaroni and cheese that fell over and it's oh, no. on the floor. And that said, caption this. And so I said, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. My sister's macaroni and cheese fell on the floor. It's a good thing I made my own. <laughs> and so I've, all the comments that got, they're just like, oh my God, that's brutal. Yeah, and <laughs> and they're just true. like, they're like, that's so petty. I love it. And you know, because <laughs> outside of California, macaroni and cheese must be like a huge thing at Thanksgiving because it is. It's a very big thing. Mm -hmm. And I know that. So that's why I put it. But it was just hilarious to see all the comments that came out because everyone's just like, it's so diehard about macaroni and cheese. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> Anyways. Well, I think that's a good wrap. I mean, yeah. God, we've been going on for what seems like hours. But um, <laughs> so hopefully everyone is uh, staying home, staying safe, not being an idiot. Mm -hmm. So let's just end this thing, please. And, you know, enjoy your Christmas shopping. Yeah. And we'll see you next time. All Bye. Right. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>